This week on Analyzing Celebrity Faces, we're taking a look at the highly requested American actor, Timothy Chalamet. He's always been a fan favorite, but personally, I don't really see the appeal. In some photos, he looks like a washed up drug dealer, and in others, he is Hollywood's latest heartthrob. From certain angles, there are visible asymmetries, and in others, he looks like a Greek statue. The best way to describe him is polarizing. Unlike a professional model who's chosen because they look good in every angle and style, Timothy is neither here nor there with his appearance. His face is a lot like Killian Murphy's. It's masculine but with a lot of feminine features. Although many people on the internet consider this to be one of Timothy's worst looks, I think it's great at highlighting his aesthetic. Let's start with the jaw. Again, it's a bit much. His bigonial width is so large that the jaw inclines outwards from the chin, giving him a very boxy, masculine appearance. This is the type of jaw that's only achievable by very large implants for the average person. The type that your surgeon would make you sign a waiver for to not be liable. It creates a sharp change in the jaw's contour that increases chin protuberance like an Egyptian burial mask. Had he had a wider chin, the jaw width would suit him much better by being less noticeable. Using some proportion tests by Bommert's 2016 paper, it's clear to see what I mean by the jaw contour. Since the jaw stretches out towards the sides, it doesn't incline as high up on the face as it should to be parallel to his mid-face proportion. It's still closer than most people, but it's one of the reasons why I think he could do with a less wide and masculine jaw. On the other hand, some argue that this is what makes his appearance unique and high fashion. An overemphasis in a certain feature is something modeling loves to tokenize, whether it be celebrating the model with vitiligo, the one that's albino, the one that has alopecia, or the one that has an overly large jaw. It's something that makes him stand out, and that's what makes his face so memorable. The thing with memorable faces is that we tend to attribute just one look to them. So when you see photos of Timothy like this, with his hairline pulled back and the roundness of his forehead visible, it contrasts with the image we have burned into our brains of this. That's why his face and so many other memorable ones like it are polarizing. It's a love-hate relationship where we're fixated on a facial ideal and anything that makes him look even slightly different makes you think twice about it. Moving up the face, let's talk about his facial width. It's about one to one with his jaw, which is unsurprising given what I've just said. The bigonial to bizygomatic ratio produces a very square shape, and it's one of the reasons why he can pull off the long haired mid part so well. Although it's yet to be covered on the channel, when men try to pull off more feminine hairstyles, it needs to contrast with their face shape to be attractive. The difference between Jason Momoa and appearing on the next episode of To Catch a Predator is not the hair, but the facial masculinity or lack thereof. Mind you, Lord Farquaad had a very masculine face, which was paired with the feminine haircut, but he ended up losing to an ogre and a talking donkey. This was a deliberate choice by the DreamWork animators to poke fun at this concept of facial contrast. Timothy has a very masculine facial width to height ratio because his face is short and incredibly wide. As numerous studies have found, and I've covered on the channel ad hominem, we base our initial perceptions on the vertical height of the mid face, as we're more sensitive to that. This facial width makes his face undeniably masculine, but his features are strikingly feminine. Short haired Timothy didn't get as much attention as his long haired variant for this very reason. That's because a face shape as square as his needs a softer, rounder hairstyle to add contrast and intrigue. Instead, a short boyish haircut makes him look like the next Why Don't We band member. The longer hair adds maturity through contrast. In his earlier photos, he had a very low juvenile hairline, which is why adding to it with a youthful haircut doesn't set him apart or boost his appeal. Older Timothy has a more recessed hairline that makes his forehead seem rounder. He actually looks more attractive now than before because his face is in better facial thirds. By having the hairline go further back, the upper third is vertically lengthened to be more proportionate with the mid face and jaw, whereas earlier on his face just seemed very short. 
Now, if you want to see more bald-headed Timothy and other facial morphs, be sure to check out the Instagram page at Koo Studio. Before we move on, I want to talk about the eyes. So, to me, there's something that's instantly noticeable about them. They have a negative canthal tilt. When you measure the lateral tilt, it comes to be about 4 degrees or so, which isn't a whole lot, but since his eyes are narrow and wide, it becomes a striking feature of the face. Imagine rotating a circular object versus a rectangular one. You notice a slight tilt in the rectangular shape a lot more easily than the circular because of rotational symmetry. This is what gives Timothy his laid-back, feminine look. His eyes aren't downturned and aggressive like most men with this type of over-the-top jaw structure, so it sets him apart as an androgynous pretty boy who's also goofy and relatable. One of Timothy's best features are actually his brow bone and eyebrows. Thick, dark eyebrows on pale skin is a rare but attractive contrast. Just look at Cara Delevingne. His are more neutrally inclined, but that purposefully suits the tilt of his eyes. He has a prominent brow bone, but without the thick supraorbital muscles you see on masculine men. This gives him a masculine bone structure while retaining a feminine contour, which is exactly what modeling standards look for in their female and androgynous models. The last point that I want to touch upon are his cheekbones. It's very clear to see that he has high cheekbones. Instead, I want to highlight just how proportionate and outward they are on his face. In Powell et al's 1984 paper, they found from thousands of 3D tomographs that the most prominent part of the cheek is parallel to a line drawn between the outer eye corner and the nose wing. In Timothy's case, this point of intersection is very far from his eyes, which is why his cheekbones stick out so prominently. With most faces that I've seen, this intersection is a lot closer to the eye, and so the cheekbones project forwards instead of outwards. So when we say that someone has obscured or prominent cheekbones, it's not that their cheekbones are physically larger, but rather they're positioned more laterally outwards from the eyes themselves. The OG curve is a term that's most commonly used in architecture to describe an S-shaped feature. In facial anatomy, it's an imaginary line that goes down the cheek, best seen from a three-quarter view. For most people, it's not a visible feature, and many incorrectly misinterpret it as having hollow cheeks. In his case, his wide bigonia width and prominent cheekbones creates a very noticeable contour, as it's all jaw underneath, which makes the face leaner by stretching the existing soft tissue over a greater area. Now, previously I've hinted at why Timothy is a great casting choice in his latest historical drama, The King. Without spoiling all of it, it's basically Shakespeare's Henry IV, if you've covered that in high school English. Timothy plays the young Prince Hal, who enjoys living in the lap of luxury without taking on any of the physical responsibility that comes with it. When you see him, his face and his physical frame, it's hardly an intimidating sight. Compare that with his antagonist, Hotspur, who's portrayed by Tom Glyn Carney, and you start to get a sense of why the casting directors chose who they did. Glyn Carney has deep eyes, very low set brow bone, and a tight masculine haircut. These stars are deliberately cast to tell the story through more than one medium. It makes you think, who's gonna win? the unintimidating Timothy who's more brain than brawn, or knuckle-headed Tom who's more brawn than brain. A lot of thought gets put into the casting choice by casting directors because of how much facial features influence our perception of the characters and thus the overall story. In writing the script for this video, my opinion of Timothy's looks have changed just a little bit. 2020 Timothy has a refined sophistication and maturity that looks great in certain situations and lighting, but he doesn't have the most proportionate model tier face, which is why it doesn't work in all situations. And so that brings us to a close. If you want us to analyze your face like the celebrities, then you can always order a Coos facial report at our website. If you want to see more facial morphs and proportions, visit the Instagram page at Coos Studio. And as always, leave down below who you want us to see next. Hopefully someone of color for some diversity. It's kind of getting a bit... Okay. Uh, Timothy won out by a overwhelming demand this week, so I do listen to the comments.